In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Our story begins in the 747th year of the Roman Empire, as the Gospel account of Luke records. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The city of Bethlehem, located five miles south of Jerusalem in the Judean hills, is also home to Rachel's tomb. Five miles southeast of Bethlehem is the Herodian, a massive fortress built by Herod the Great. This is perhaps the most outstanding of Herod's architectural conceits. As a result of all his conquests, Herod felt he needed a safe haven from those seeking revenge. Included in the layout were hot baths, arcades, a synagogue, and numerous other luxuries. The banquet hall of the palace is as immense as a football stadium. Herod is best remembered, however, for his massacre upon a small village within view of this mighty fortress. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now Jesus was spared the Bethlehem massacre by an angel who appeared to Joseph, telling him to flee into Egypt. After Herod's death, an angel again appeared to Joseph, and the family returned to Israel, settling in Nazareth, thereby fulfilling the prophecy, he shall be called a Nazarene. It was in Nazareth that the angel brought to Mary God's message that she would conceive and bear a son by the Holy Spirit. It was here that Jesus grew up and worked as a carpenter, and it was here that he was scorned and rejected.
Now the ministry of Jesus was preceded by John the Baptist, who lived and preached along the Jordan River, north of the Dead Sea. This famous river flows down from the snow-capped heights of Mount Hermon, through the Sea of Galilee, to the depths of the Dead Sea. It twists and curves in a 160-mile-long bed, while the distance it covers is only 65 miles in a straight line. John's Gospel records, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. Matthew's account records that Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River and then led into the wilderness of Judea. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward an hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dice thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leadeth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Thus begins the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. Soon after this, he and his disciples attended a wedding in Cana, where Jesus performed his first miracle, changing water into wine. Today, a church commemorates the traditional place of the event. Not long after the miracle at Cana, Jesus and his newly selected disciples went up to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Jerusalem also called the city of David, the eternal city, the golden city, even the city of peace, though ravaged by war for more than 25 centuries. For Jews, Christians, and Muslims, Jerusalem is the holy city. It is first mentioned in Genesis over 4,000 years ago when Abraham met Melchizedek, who was its king. Jerusalem is perhaps the most significant place in all of history. To the Jew, it is the place where Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, where the temple was thrice built and destroyed, and where the Wailing Wall remains as the only reminder of their former glory. To the Muslim, it is the place where Muhammad is believed to have ascended to heaven, commemorated by the Mosque of Omar, also called the Dome of the Rock, built in 691 AD and still standing today on the same location formerly occupied by the temple. To the Christian, Jerusalem is the place frequented by Jesus. Surprisingly, we have no record that Jesus ever spent a night within the city walls, preferring instead the safety and seclusion of nearby Bethany and the Mount of Olives. 
It was in Jerusalem that Jesus was presented in the temple shortly after his birth. It was here that at the age of 12, he astounded the teachers and religious leaders with his understanding. It was here that he twice cleansed the temple of religious profiteers. Here, resentment and jealousy mounted against him, and a plot to kill him was set in motion. Here he was betrayed, falsely tried, and was crucified for the sins of mankind. And it was here that he arose, alive, the champion over death. It was in Jerusalem that Jesus taught Nicodemus about the new birth. How can a man be born when he is old? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Today, Jerusalem is populated by Jews, Arabs, and Christians, totaling more than 400,000 with approximately 27,000 inhabitants within the old city walls. Those old walls we are familiar with do not date back to the time of Christ, but were actually rebuilt by the Ottoman conqueror, Suleiman the Magnificent, in the 16th century. They are two and a half miles in circumference and average 40 feet in height. There are eight gates around the old city, Seven are open, and one, the Eastern Gate, or Golden Gate, is sealed. It is a Muslim belief that the Messiah will enter through the Eastern Gate, heralding the new kingdom and the end of the Muslim religion. The gate was sealed in 1530 AD to thwart the Messiah's return. Below the Eastern Gate, and separating Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, is the Kidron Valley. Here lie the ruins of the Pillar of Absalom, the tomb of Zechariah, and the tomb of Hetzer, or James. Despite their traditional names, these are most likely part of a vast necropolis that surrounded Jerusalem in the first century AD. Connecting with the Kidron Valley and running along the southern wall is the Valley of Gehenna. For Christians, this is most remembered as the potter's field, where Judas hanged himself after betraying Jesus. It was, however, in Galilee, not Jerusalem, that Jesus lived and ministered. The Sea of Galilee, also called the Lake of Gennesaret, is 13 miles long, seven miles wide, 130 to 160 feet deep, and lies at 686 feet below sea level. In Jesus' day, it was surrounded by nine cities, each of not less than 15,000 inhabitants. It was here that Jesus spent most of his public life, gave most of his teachings, and worked most of his miracles. Here, Jesus called most of his disciples. Here, he healed the sick and lame. Here, he spoke to the multitudes from Peter's boat, fed the hungry, and on a hillside within view, he delivered his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake,
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The teachings of Jesus were more than philosophical rhetoric. His authority was backed by the miraculous. Matthew records one of his many miracles performed in Galilee. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Of particular interest to Jesus was the city of Capernaum. Located on the north bank of the Sea of Galilee, this was the center of activities for most of his public life. Here also was the home of his close friend and apostle, Peter. It was during his ministry here that Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever, raised Jairus' daughter, gave sight to two blind men, freed a dumb demoniac, it was here that a paralytic was lowered through the roof to be healed and forgiven. And it was here that an unnamed woman was healed simply by touching the fringe of his garment. Although Capernaum was signed to many of Jesus' miracles, he cursed it for rejecting his deity. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. This prophecy of Jesus about Capernaum was fulfilled. The city was destroyed and its location lost for centuries. Today, ancient Capernaum is no more than a heap of ruins among the palm trees. The ministry of Jesus continued for three years, traversing Israel, teaching, healing, proclaiming the kingdom of God. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. The third year of Jesus' ministry brought mounting opposition from the religious leaders they now plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus withdrew from much of his public ministry and devoted himself to preparing his small band of ordinary men for the task that lay ahead. During the last few months of his ministry, his close friend Lazarus died. John records the event. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, 
he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. The raising of Lazarus caused many Jews to believe on him. In fact, the event caused such a commotion that the Jewish leaders sought to kill Lazarus as well as Jesus. Continuing from Luke's account. And it came to pass when he was come nigh into Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus their own. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Thus begins a series of prophetic events that would change the course of history. After entering Jerusalem, Jesus proceeded to the temple where he cleansed it a second time. Matthew's account tells us, And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee, henceforward for ever. And presently the fig tree withered away. In the last few days preceding the Passover feast, Jesus continued teaching and healing in the temple area. He clearly proclaimed his deity, and many followed him, though the Jewish leaders waited only for an opportunity to seize him and put him to death. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. 
And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Then took they him, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And the men that held Jesus mocked him, and smote him. And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people, and the chief priest, and the scribes came together, and led him into their counsel, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priest and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And it was about the sixth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? And they remembered.
remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. The risen Lord made numerous appearances to his disciples in the 40 days before he ascended back to heaven. The Apostle Paul reports that on one occasion, Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. Luke records that on the afternoon of Resurrection Sunday, Jesus appeared to two men walking on the road to Emmaus, a small village about seven miles northwest of Jerusalem. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Thus the plan of redemption was complete. God sent his only son to die for the sins of mankind and arose victor over death so that we too might live forever. His final words to his disciples commissioned them to tell this good news to all the world. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be saved. Luke concludes his narrative gospel thus. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So for a brief moment in time, God visited our planet in a land called Israel and history became his story. We conclude as John did. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. information on how you can receive the angel award-winning Israel God's Chosen People or Israel Sings Again, call today, 800-327-9332. That's 800-327-9332. Roy Gustafson writes, these videos are the best that I have seen. Call today, Israel God's Chosen People, Israel Sings Again. 800-327-9332.